Have you ever wondered how you could be more creative in your mindfulness classes? You ever thought if that's even worth doing and if there's a point to that, is it even allowed in the sense of does it still have the same beneficial effect? Uh, if you're too creative, would you would some of your students be missing out on some of the known evidence based benefits of mindfulness? That's some of the things that we're going to be exploring about and also how to be more creative within our classes. My name is Shamash Aladina. This is the Teach Mindfulness podcast, and uh, we're talking all about creativity today. Now, creativity happens to be one of uh, my values. I really enjoy being creative and doing things in a creative way. Uh, it makes me feel alive, makes me feel connected. And I think it's true for a lot of people, actually. I think it's part of our human nature to be creative. And when we are being creative, it just makes us feel more connected, more alive. And when there's a sense of creativity of a mindfulness teacher with their students, this the, the whole group, I feel, gets more connected and more mindful. So that's why I think it's really nice to be creative. And how does it link to mindfulness? Well, interestingly, whenever you do something new, whenever you do something different, mindfulness is automatically generated. Have you noticed that? If you're always walking down the same pathway or the same street, you may be mindful if you consciously make the effort, but if you're going on a completely new route or in a completely different country, or you've always had the same guided meditation and suddenly there's a different type of guided meditation, have you noticed how your awareness naturally increases? Well, this is something that's uh, been developed through evolution. When things are the same, it's more, it kind of saves energy in your brain to, for it to become more mindless, to make it more autopilot. Because if there's no dangers there, there's there's nothing different happening. But whenever something new or different happens, imagine if you heard a, a, suddenly a weird sound in the background or something, you'd suddenly notice it. It's something different. Your mindfulness rise, rises. So if you have been teaching mindfulness for a while or you're getting into teaching mindfulness and you want to help to engage your students, think about how you could guide your meditations or your classes or your sessions a little bit differently. Now, let, let me explain why this is important and how to do this. So I've talked in an earlier episode about the four skills of mindfulness. And these four skills have been clearly defined through research in a model called the psychological flexibility model or the ACT model. And so there's thousands of studies. It's well respected, you know, everything from the National Health Service here in the UK to the World Health Organization on the global stage and many, many different organizations all over the world. They very much trust this the quality of this research. And so what you can do is rather than thinking, I have to do this fixed eight week program or this fixed six week program. If you understand these four skills of mindfulness and we know that they are beneficial to people, you can be creative within to share those skills and develop the skills for your students. So let the, just to remind you, the four skills are acceptance, cognitive diffusion, which is unhooking, transcendent self which is like the observing self and being flexibly present so those four skills if you can bring within your session some of that or any one of those then you are developing mindfulness in an evidence-based way your students are going to be benefiting from it it's going to improve their mental emotional and physical well-being and so you can within that you can unleash your creativity now when it comes to being creative one of the things I've discovered is that it's important to have constraints. So for example, uh, I have a daily mindfulness class that I run, the Daily Mindfulness Club. And I know that it's always going to start at a certain time and finish at a certain time from 7.30 to 8 a.m. And I know that there's there's quite often going to be some quiet time. So there's that's another little constraint there. Uh, and I know that I'm going to be guiding it. And so within those constraints, different things can be done. Sometimes we have music, sometimes we have the sounds of nature. Uh, sometimes somebody else may guide the exercise. We often, if you can actually go through the different senses and think about how your students can connect with their various senses. So sight, we use sometimes video because I'm teaching it online, uh, videos of nature or different elements of nature. You can use a, a fixed image, which I, we use very often. Sounds. I've already mentioned about music and about uh, nature sounds or silence as well. 
smell or scent. I haven't gone down that route too much, but obviously you can connect with the scent, the sense of smell that, that, that people have in the room. Or you can actually invite them to, you know, light a candle or some incense or have some different scent in the room, some lavender, and that could be quite a fun thing to do. Taste, you can do mindful eating. We've had a mindful eating uh, exercise once as well you know, within that session. And touch. Um, and touch one great way to engage in this in the more in a different way to just doing something like a body scan would be self massage right you could just uh, ask the students to massage through their hands or massage their head and that could be quite nice actually we do it quite often at the beginning of our class and it helps them to engage with the experience we also do things like mindful movement so it's even going beyond the senses in a, in the sense of uh, kinesthetic movement in the body and bringing awareness that way. So there's a few ideas and tips and different things that you could do when it comes to guiding mindful exercises in your classes. Um, I've talked about the constraints and the value of constraints and that could be time can be a constraint so you know how long the session is going to be. I guess we have a constraint of the four skills of mindfulness that we want to share with the group. Um, and then within those constraints, it does involve taking some risks, trying something different. And sometimes it might work well, sometimes it might not work so well, and that's okay too. Uh, you can be a little bit playful and have some fun with it. And if your group knows that you're trying something new, you could share that with them. And your, your intention is to help them to be more mindful and present. And within that, I think they would they would feel safe because you, you've shared that with them. And then you can try some different things, maybe some small little fun activities or ideas. Another thing that comes to mind is that with groups and if it's in person, some of, some of the acting games or, or exercises that people do when they're training for theatre and stuff, some of them are actually quite mindful. So you could look that up and that could be a source of information for you to think about how you could be more creative in your sessions. Uh, reading around, you know, different authors, different podcasts, uh, maybe some different YouTube videos could start giving you some ideas for what you could do. If you're part of a community, then you could maybe ask for ideas in there or share some of your ideas and they may share some of theirs. And remember with, with mindfulness, those four skills are developed not just within the space of meditation, but in our everyday lives very much too. So you can, you know, talk about mindful cooking and mindful gardening and mindful walking down the street and keep it real as well with people's normal everyday lives as they kind of go to the gym and exercise or uh, when they're feeling sick how could you actually encourage them and develop mindfulness and, and get creative and then you can take it even to the next level by uh, once your students get more experience like how could they contribute to the class maybe they want to do something that brings some creativity so it's not all coming from you it's even more powerful if it's a shared creative experience where you're creating something new and different together so there's some ideas that that's come to my mind about uh, bringing more creativity into your mindful classes and uh, i'm excited that with this new model uh, the psychological flexibility model and we know these four skills work we can be much more creative in the way we develop courses and classes and share mindfulness with others. Well, thanks a lot for listening today. Next uh, episode is going to be about how do we bring values into mindfulness classes. I'm going to talk about the power of doing meaningful things or the power of helping your students to find out what's meaningful for them and how that links to mindfulness. So yeah, I look forward to he hearing from you, uh, connecting with you in the next session. Thanks for listening to the Teach Mindfulness podcast. Feel free to get in touch if you want to join a mindful teacher community that we're starting. Or if you want to learn to teach mindfulness, get in touch as well. Uh, see you in our next session.